It's a controversial question, especially here in France, it must be said, about social movements, feminism, anti-racism, and the fight for LGBTQ rights. Are these movements universal, or should they be broken down into smaller sub-movements to better address the intersectional nature of oppression? Well, in her latest book, African Feminisms, University of Edinburgh professor Rama Saladien considers what it means to be a feminist specifically in Africa today through a series of interviews with activists across the continent. She joins me now for Perspective. Professor Saladien, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. So can you talk first about uh, your book? What were some of the most striking testimonies for you to come out of it? This book is an, a series of interviews with 15 African feminists from Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Ghana, many countries on the continent and in the diaspora, including France. So the most striking um, issues um, that have been discussed is the centrality of self-care, for instance. And when I talk about self, it doesn't mean... I don't have this individual definition of self-care because in Africa the self is, you know, a com community. So... Centering self-care, centering mental health. Also, um, if we were to find a subtitle for this book, it would be uh, discussing the politics and poetics of knowing, organizing, and loving. So I'm asking them about the um, complementarity between digital and more traditional uh, means that they use to organize, uh, whether it is um, social media, whether it is campa campaign strategies, meeting, gathering, networking. Um, and as you know, for, for some of these organizations or um, collectives with the lack of funding, the digital offers new avenues uh, for organizing. So one of the most striking themes as well is the centrality of um, um, sorority um, and having this intersectional approach to organizing. Because when we talk about um, uh, the LGBT QI uh, community in Ghana, for instance, or we talk about... Um, um, feminist organizing in Ghana, Senegal, we have to also take into consideration the specific environment in which these contexts or social movements take place. So having this intersectional approach allow us to, to understand the intersection of uh, whether it is um, um, inequalities or uh, privileges, whatever it is. So it allows us to really understand what is at play. Here in France, Professor, there's a constant debate about universal values, this idea mm -hmm. that uh, anti-racism is humanism, feminism mm -hmm. is humanism. Mm -hmm. What makes Afro-feminism different than Western feminism? Um, one, of the inter one of the interviewees is uh, Mam Fatunyan, who just wrote a book on, fem on universal uh, universalism with uh, Julien Ciodo. So I think it is timely to have this debate. What the, wh why do we talk about African feminisms, as I just said? Uh, there is a, the place from which we talk matters because we need to take uh, in consideration, consideration situated knowledges and situated dynamics of power. And that's what uh, African feminists are organizing against, organizing against patriarchies, organizing against um, uh, privileges and sexism and uh, capitalism and all this. So when we talk about, for me, when I see humanism or when I see this concept of humanism, I, I always worry what there is to hide, who is not able to speak, who is, you know, whose voice is not represented in this humanism, because not all of us are, see, are seen as equal citizens, whether it is in France or whichever country you might name. There are always individuals who are not taken into consideration from mainstream debates and mainstream discourses, and that's what this book does. It does bring a feminist uh, intersectional dimension to, uh, to understand who is uh, most privileged, who is most uh, discriminated against, and that's the value of having this intersectional uh, um, approach rather than a humanist one, in my opinion. <laughs> so there's uh, Afrofeminism, which is distinct from Western feminism or maybe mm -hmm. Latin American feminism or, mm -hmm. or whatever else. But your book puts African feminism in the, plur in the plural, African mm -hmm. feminisms. Mm -hmm. uh, so what 
what different forms of feminism on the continent can we can we find? Is it based on different nationalities, religions, ethnicities? It is based on the different political economies and ecologies that uh, engendered them. So when you talk about uh, Francophone Africa, for instance, compared with uh, Anglophone African countries, there are cultural dynamics at play, of course, but there are also the fact that some issues are not discussed as much. When we talk about Senegal recently, we have seen a resurgence of anti-feminist uh, movement, like the anti-LGBT uh, uh, bill. We have also the law, as in Ghana, the law, um, the anti-LGBT law. So there is a tendency to 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 want to um, give up or to want for women to to. Uh, go back <laughs> in centuries later from what we have acquired through fight and so on. So when we talk about um, this, uh, when we have this um, approach, we are also centering, as I just mentioned, the voices that are not taken into consideration. So regarding the ideologies, as in any country, we, we have radical feminists, we have um, liberal feminists who center on individual rights, and um, we also have socialist feminists, we have new wave, the fourth wave of young feminists organizing through social media and so on. We have the Afrofuturist or Afropolitan voices of feminism. So feminism is, uh, this book shows the, the heterogeneous nature of feminism in Africa right now. And it simply states that there are as much feminisms that there are of feminists in Africa. And what matters is our, our uh, power to overcome those different those differences and to organize together for the collective good. Professor, that is unfortunately all the time we have for today. But thank you so much for coming on the show. As a reminder, her book, Feminism African, is, is, is published in French. Thank you so much for having me.